So Google just dropped an announcement that has absolutely shaken up the world of computing. It's a project they call Quantum Echoes. And honestly, this might just be the moment we look back on when quantum computers stopped being theory and started getting useful. Let's break down what this actually means and why it's such a massive deal. You know, for years, it's always been the same question. When are these things going to do more than just cool party tricks in a lab? When will I do something practical? Well, it looks like this latest breakthrough from Google's quantum AI team means that moment is a whole lot closer than any of us thought. Okay, let's just start with a number that made everybody's jaw hit the floor. On a specific, useful task, Google's brand new quantum system running on their Willow chip was 13,000 times faster than the most powerful supercomputers on the planet. But here's the thing, as absolutely wild as that number is, the speed isn't even the most important part of the story, not by a long shot. To really get why this is such a game changer, we have to talk about something called verifiability. See, this isn't just about being fast. It's about being fast in a way that's reliable, useful, and this is the key part, can be double checked against experiments in the real world. This right here is the new gold standard. It's one thing to solve some weird abstract math problem that no one can even check. It's a whole other thing to solve a genuinely useful scientific problem and then be able to prove your answer is right by comparing it to what happens in nature. That is a huge, huge shift in the game. So why has this been so incredibly difficult until now? Well, it all boils down to one massive problem that has haunted this entire field, quantum noise. And to understand that, we gotta start with the absolute basic building block of a quantum computer. This whole idea of being in multiple states at once, superposition, that's the magic trick. It's where a quantum computer gets all its incredible power, letting it explore this vast landscape of possibilities all at the same time. But here's the catch. That quantum state is unbelievably fragile. I mean, the tiniest little disturbance can throw the whole thing into chaos and wreck the calculation. And this analogy just nails it. The actual, useful quantum signal you're trying to listen for? It's that tiny whisper but it's completely buried under this deafening roar of errors and noise. Trying to pull meaningful data out of that mess has been one of the single biggest roadblocks in all of quantum computing. So how did Google's team get around this? Well, they couldn't just build a quieter stadium. So instead, they came up with this incredibly slick algorithm to listen for the echo of that whisper, even with the rock concert blaring at full volume. The idea itself is just brilliant. It really is like echolocation. You know how a bat sends out a little chirp and then listens to the echo to figure out what's around it? Google's algorithm does a quantum version of that. It sends a signal through the system, gives it a tiny poke, runs the whole thing backward, and then analyzes the echo that comes back. This four-step dance is just pure genius. When you run the operations forward and then backward, you create this interference pattern. And that echo you get back isn't just random noise. It's a faint but totally readable signal that tells you all this hidden information about how the different parts of the quantum system are talking to each other. Now, a clever software trick like this is useless if you don't have the hardware to run it on. And that's where Google's newest, most powerful quantum processor comes in. Its name is Willow, and it's the engine that finally made it possible to hear that echo. Make no mistake, the Willow chip is an absolute beast. We're talking 105 qubits, but it's not just bigger, it's fundamentally better. It uses these superconducting circuits to make what are called quantum gates. You can think of them as the little operations that flip the qubits around, and the accuracy of these gates is just off the charts. That precision is what lets them run thousands of operations while keeping that quantum noise under control, a problem scientists have been banging their heads against for 30 years. And here's where you can really see the difference in black and white. This is coherence time, basically how long a qubit can hold on to its fragile quantum state before it all falls apart. Compared to Google's last chip, Sycamore, Willow lasts five times longer. That is a monumental leap in stability and performance. But here's what it took to get there. To be absolutely sure of their results and filter out all that noise, the team had to perform a mind-boggling one trillion measurements. To put that into perspective for you, that's a huge fraction of all measurements ever performed on all quantum computers in history, all put together, just staggering. Okay, so this all sounds incredibly impressive, but what does it actually do? What does it mean for the real world? This is where the story pivots from being a really cool science experiment to being a tool that could genuinely change the world. 
To really get it, you have to look back at Google's last big announcement in 2019. Back then, they hit what they called quantum supremacy, but that was for a problem that was basically designed just to be hard for a regular computer. It was a proof of concept. What they've done now, verifiable quantum advantage, is different. They've tackled a genuinely useful problem that has a direct line to real-world applications, like discovering new drugs or designing new materials. So what was that first useful task? Well, Google teamed up with researchers at UC Berkeley to use this new tech for something that's incredibly important in chemistry and biology, predicting the exact shape and structure of molecules. And the results were just, wow. They used quantum echoes on the Willow chip, got their predictions for a couple of molecules, and then took them to a real lab to check them with standard equipment. The result? A perfect match. I mean, not close. Perfect. But here's the kicker. The quantum computer saw details about those molecules that are literally invisible to our best current tools. So this isn't about replacing an old tool. It's about adding a whole new sense we never had before. This success has made Google so confident that they're actually putting a timeline on the future. They are betting that we are going to see practical, real-world uses for this technology within the next five years. So you can see this clear roadmap taking shape. We went from the 2019 proof of concept to today, the first genuinely useful application. The next major stop on the line is widespread practical use around 2030. But the final destination, the holy grail for this entire field, is something called a fault-tolerant logical qubit. So what on earth is a logical qubit? You can think of it like a super qubit that has its own error correction built right in. You take a whole bunch of noisy, error-prone physical qubits and use them together to encode the information of one single perfect qubit. That way, you can spot and fix errors as they happen. This is the key to building quantum computers that can run complex problems for hours or days, instead of just tiny fractions of a second. And that really brings us to the most powerful way to think about what's just happened. This was never just about building a faster computer. It's about inventing a completely new kind of scientific instrument, a quantum scope that lets us peer into the fundamental workings of nature in a way we've never been able to before. You know, just like the telescope opened up the cosmos and the microscope opened up the world of biology, this breakthrough gives us a brand new tool to explore the deepest mysteries of molecules, of new materials, maybe even of the universe itself. And the biggest question now is, what are we going to discover when we finally point this new scope into the dark? <laughs>